This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to discuss exactly what you can do to prevent your dog from getting cancer. How to prevent your dog from getting cancer. Cancer is now the number one cause of death in dogs. The National Cancer Institute has published figures saying more than 27 million dogs in the United States will be diagnosed with cancer each year. Of dogs over the age of 10, over 50% will now have cancer, an estimated 14 million. Golden Retrievers have the highest incidence of cancer amongst all dog breeds. The breed's average lifespan is now down to 10 and a half years, and 60% of all Goldens will die of cancer. Breeds at increased risk include Golden Retrievers, Boxers, Rottweilers, Bernese Mountain Dogs, Boston Terriers, Irish Setters, Cocker Spaniels, and English Bulldogs. The definition of cancer is of abnormal cells which divide without control and are able to invade other tissues. Cancer cells can spread to other parts of the body through the blood and lymphatic systems. Cells grow and divide normally in a controlled way to produce more cells as they are needed to keep the body healthy. When cells become old or damaged, they die and are replaced with new cells. But sometimes this process goes wrong. There are mutations in which cells do not die when they should, and new cells form when the body doesn't need them. These extra cells may form a massive tissue called cancer or a tumor. The first type of cancer I want to discuss is lymphoma. It's probably one of the most common one. It's cancer of the lymph cells, lymphocytes, and lymphoid tissues. Lymphoid tissue is found in the lymph nodes, spleen, liver, intestinal tract, and the bone marrow. The type of lymphoma depends upon where the cancer originates. It may be the skin form, the intestinal form, or generalized and spread throughout the lymph nodes, called multicentric. The next uh, signs for you, for you to watch for include a firm lump that grows and won't go away. As, as you can see here, this dog has got lymphoma and his submandibular lymph nodes are enlarged. Some pets have an increased appetite but continue to lose weight. Others may have problems breathing and may show overall weakness if they are becoming anemic. Mast cell tumors. Mast cell tumor signs for you to watch for include a firm lump that grows and won't go away. Most common mast cell tumors are abnormal skin growths. They are typically red and raised from the skin. They can spread to regional lymph nodes and in some cases other organs. Mast cell tumors can be present wherever mast cells exist in the body, you know, such as the spleen, liver, lungs, or the skin. And pictured here is a dog with a mast cell tumor. You can see it's a small red raised lump. Um, they are seemingly graded as with lymphomas, grade 1, which is local growing, to grade 5, where the tumor cells are spread throughout the body. Osteosarcoma. It's also known as bone cancer, and it's common in median, medium to large breed dogs. The bones of the legs are most commonly affected. So most dogs first intermittently limp, then progressively limp more often as the tumor grows from the inside of the bone out. At that point you may see a swelling at the end of the bone, and that's what you can see here at the end of this dog's front leg. You see that swelling just over his carpus, and it's firm and very painful to touch. So what are the causes? You know, what are all these causes of, of cancer? A number of different things. You think about the toxins, exposure to environmental toxins such as smog, herbicides, insecticides, pesticides, being contributing factors. No question, vaccines have been implicated along with what your dog is eating, along with food. Think about chemical preservatives and other chemical additives. Then there's the genetic components. We're seeing increased incidence within certain breeds, and some breeds now have a shorter lifespan because of cancer. So what can you do as a concerned dog owner to prevent your dog from getting cancer in the first place? Fortunately, there's a number of things. First of all, avoid these toxins. You know, avoid topical pesticides, you know, such as a flea and topical tick medication, unless you really need them. Um, avoid using toxic lawn care products. Think about what you're using in your house. Avoid those toxic cleaners. I mean, wherever your pets are, are walking on and standing, they're, they're going to be then grooming their paws, ingesting so much more of that than you would. As a society, we're exposed to more cancer-causing products than we're even aware. A recent study showed the presence of over 75 env environmental carcinogens in a group of so-called healthy people. Now, there really are many things that you can do to prevent cancer, and these changes, they're going to be good for both you and your pet. Vaccines. Only vaccinate your dog for what is absolutely necessary. A limited vaccine program, in my opinion, is highly recommended and especially important if your dog belongs to one of those more susceptible breeds. 
Vaccines work by continually stimulating the immune system. In an older dog, this may bring on undesirable effects. Many researchers have wondered about the increased frequency of vaccines over the past 30 years and the increased incidence of cancer in their pets. The bottom line, only vaccinate your dog for the de diseases they're likely to get if not vaccinated for, and only give the vaccine boosters as often as needed. As a generality, in my opinion, most dogs can go without any vaccines past the age of three. Exercise. You know, as with people, regular exercise will help prevent cancer. It keeps the body weight lower, it causes the release of these wonderful stress-relaxing hormones called endorphins. Recent studies in people have shown that moderate to intense exercise can dramatically reduce the chance of developing cancer. In a Finnish study, researchers determined that after controlling for cigarette smoking, fiber and fat intake, age and other variables, the most physically active men were the least likely to develop cancer, particular of the gastrointestinal tract or the lung. Clearly, the study can be, similar study can be drawn to our dogs. One simple technique to de decreasing dog cancer is with regular exercise. You regularly exercising your dog a minimum of 30 minutes twice a day. Nutrition, you know, of all the things I discuss, I mean, it is probably the most important aspect of cancer prevention in your pet. When the body is supported with the building blocks needed to maintain healthy cells and repair damaged ones, healing from within can begin. No question, it's best to feed your dog a premium quality holistic diet. Avoid artificial colors, avoid artificial flavors. Make sure that your dog's food is naturally preserved. You know, many dogs can thrive on a raw food diet and if you take the proper precautions, I really think this is an excellent option. I encourage you to look at supplementing your dog's diet with cancer preventing nutrients. In people, the general advice is, is to eat a diet that includes far more fruits and vegetables. Some of the studies have shown that this simple chain can reduce the risk of many cancers by as much as 30 to 50%. It's huge. You know, and dogs were typically not feeding anything fresh, just hoping that the supposed dry, nutritious dog kibble contains all, the, all that they need. But there's a couple different things you can look at adding. You know, I've got this picture here showing a dog eating yogurt because those probiotics are so good for your dog. Omega-3 fatty acids, I mean, they should be added, in my opinion, to every dog's diet. In fact, EFAs are vital. Omega-3 fatty acids are great anti-inflammatories, and some studies have suggested that they may lower the likelihood of some types of cancer. They're inexpensive, easy to give. You can give your dog one tablespoon of flax oil for 50 pounds of body weight daily. Just add it directly to the food. Um, other, it comes in the form of other supplements, such as in ground flax seed or in fish oil. Antioxidants, and the wonderful substances, which are key to protecting cells from damage caused by free radicals. Free radicals are unstable molecules formed dur during just normal cellular reactions. Most scientists tend to agree that free radical damage can lead to cancer. There are many different antioxidants, such as vitamins A, C, E, selenium, and those are in my supplement, Ultimate Canine Health Formula. Other ones include lutein, beta carotene, lycopene, even green tea. A really simple way for you to increase the antioxidants in your dog's diet is with the use of ground flax seed. It contains considerable levels of vitamin E, selenium, and ligands, and these are all antioxidants. The dose I advise is to give your dog one tablespoon of ground flax seed for 50 pounds of body weight daily. You can add it directly to their dry kibble. Many dogs are just going to eat. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. What I want you to do right now is click that link above. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then after you've done that, go ahead and then click that link below. And when you sign up to my newsletter, I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.